Bum, bum. Hey everybody, my name is Redwald. Thank you all so very much for being here, and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. Um, Paradox has been really pushing this game lately, uh, and so it caught my eye, and I picked it up. I think actually for a little while it was free, I'm not sure if that's still the case. But I picked it up with all the DLC and stuff, and I was like, oh, I love Paradox games. I love Crusader Kings. Um, so I thought I'd get stuck right in, and... God damn it, if this isn't one of the most complex grand strategy games I have ever played. Um, and it took me a long time. I had to watch like a bunch of YouTube videos uh, to just like figure out how to play the game um, at a basic level, right? So I had an idea that um, I might go through and sort of make a beginner to beginner tutorial. For any of you who are picking it up for the first time with uh, Paradox's promotion on it right now. Um, to maybe see, you know, what, what tips I've picked up as learning the game that might be able to help you going forward. So I'm going to do a USA uh, tutorial. Tutorial in quotes, right? Because I'm not an expert. Um, but I just figure, you know, if you're an American like me, when you boot up this game for the first time, you're probably going to play america uh <laughs> before you play anyone else because that's how we roll as americans we we like ourselves very much um but i found one of the hard things that i struggled with as the usa was you have all this downtime in the beginning right you're not immediately stuck into war and it's kind of a delicate balance of moving forward uh, with your economy and everything because if you fuck it up you're fucked like if you do it wrong in the beginning, you will just never be able to pull off D-Day or anything like that. So we're going to start in 1936, and um, the idea I had was I'm just going to do one episode for one year. So I'll do this 36, and the next episode will be 37, 38, and so on. Um, here we are, FDR, my favorite president, my second favorite civil engineer. Um, USA, looking great. Nice, nice. Rocking the wheelchair. Um, so here we are. The one thing I am going to tweak is I have found it's be you got to give the Soviets just a little bump or else the Germans will wreck them. They will just run all fucking over them. It's absurd. Um, so we gave the Soviets a little bump there. Historical AI focuses because I'm going to try to play this as historical as humanly possible. So, hopefully, 42, we can hit North Africa, 43, Italy, 44, France. Um, yeah, and without further ado, let's just get going, and I'll sort of explain things as we encounter them. So, here we are. This is our great nation, and her assorted colonies um that we don't talk about very often <laughs> at least in america so the first things first you're gonna notice um ah what am i doing we have all these guys all these guys running around um and i believe they're national guard divisions i mean first thing we gotta do is is get rid of all of them they suck yes, they suck we need uh to get the equipment and manpower back in our pools. Um, and we can build better divisions than them. We're not at war. We won't be at war for several years. So we can just drop everybody. And refill as needed. Uh, still more? Oh yeah, down in Puerto Rico. Ah, in the Philippines, because the Philippines are a colony currently. Um, and the Panama Canal, excellent. Old Teddy. Nice, so we did that. Beautiful. Now, the notifications at the top, right, it works a lot like Crusader Kings or EU4 or pretty much any Paradox game. You have pressing notifications pop up at the top telling you what you need to accomplish. Um, and if you're just diving in for the first time, this whole UI is going to be just completely overwhelming. So we're going to just start with the things, right? Research. Americans, we are spoiled. We're going to get uh, an additional two research slots if we play our cards right. Um, as you can see, we got military, 
naval, air, and industry, sort of the sections of technology. We can wait on military technology for a little while. Um, the one thing we should get going is our tanks. Start the tanks early. Um, we are going to need to build a lot of planes and a lot of tanks. Planes we can produce rather quickly. Tanks take longer. So we're going to get our tanks going right away. And then with our other research slots, we are going to go into electronic mechanical engineering. Um, and the other, like, starter infantry stuff. Basic machine... Uh, infantry? Industry stuff. Basic machine tools, construction, and what have you. National focuses are hugely important in this game. They basically... You know, they're not their tech trees, because I just showed you the tech. Uh, but... They're like... I don't know. There's no real good uh, analysis for what they're like in other games, honestly. Um, so if you don't have the DLCs, you just won't have this tree uh, left here from the WPA. That'll be the, the far end. Uh, we're not going to go down that way anyway, so it really doesn't matter. We'll just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, but the first thing we have to do as Americans is get out of the Great Depression. Um, so the first step to that is continuing the new deal so we're going to start that that's going to be our first national focus and i'll show you where we go from there now mind you if you're a big hearts of iron forehead you're probably going to watch this uh well you probably won't even watch this because you know what you're doing but um you might watch this and say oh my god what the fuck are you doing and i'll be like ah i don't know i'm just learning too um so out you know like uh, uh give me a comment and let me know what i could be doing better because that will help me and help people watch this video because they can read that comment. So this is our uh, political decisions screen. Political power ticks up uh, passively, and then we spend it on this shit. Uh, so as you can see, we have about half the House, about half the Senate uh, support, that is. Um, that's typical. Typical American. So we're going to get 150 political power when the New Deal finishes. We can't do anything else right now. This is our country government screen. As you can see, we have this gruesome, undisturbed isolation. So our first priority, right, is breaking out of the Great Depression and getting up to at least early mobilization because the negative buffs from this undisturbed isolation are fucking abysmal. Look at that. Fuel gain <laughs> per oil, negative 60%. Uh, fucking construction speed, negative 50%, like, Jesus, that's horrible. But as you see, we need to get, um, the limited intervention focus to break out of there. So, that being said, we have disbanded all our useless National Guard troops. Um, I should point out that if you're playing multiplayer... Maybe you want to keep those around, because people might just invade you off bat. People are crazy. First things first, I'm going to train some Marines, because we need our Marines. They're going to head down to the Pacific, and I'll probably have them hang out in Hawaii. So this is the training screen, and then it also allows us to edit our divisions. This is all very important, and I'll talk about that a little later on. Um, for the, how many Marines can we recruit? Six? It's fine with me. We'll train six units of Marines in San Francisco, and then we'll send them down to the Pacific as needed. Um, if we go over here to Occupied Territories, we have all these uh, all these nice little island nations. Um, I'm going to switch the Garrison Divisions to National Guard. Um, that says, not enough manpower or equipment. It'll fix itself. Don't worry about that. Because... We do not need these cavalry divisions, and we can't get rid of them otherwise because they are stuck as the garrison division for our occupied territories. So I hope you're following me. I know this is all very much <laughs> a lot <laughs> going on right now. Um, civilian? Okay, so the factories are important. Civilian factories basically fuel your economy, affect construction speed and trade. Um... And production, like, available production value, uh, which is that little wrench icon with the numbers next to it. And then military factories, obviously, are used to produce military equipment. Um, 
and you can adjust the number of military factories here. So we have a couple of free ones. Let's uh, let's produce some shit planes. As I said, we're gonna we're gonna like really crank out planes later on, so we don't have to worry too much about our planes right now. Um, how many? Yeah, okay. We'll wait to build tanks. We should build some trucks. Ah, uh, yeah. Build some. We'll build some trucks because uh, we're gonna need those later on when we start editing our divisions. Um, and ships. I know it's like so overwhelming when you first look at it. We're producing way too many ships. We don't need this many ships. If we look at the navy. America starts with like the dopest navy in the whole game. We have enough ships. Like we could not produce any ships, and still win all our naval wars later on. Pretty much. Now we have a, a, a like I said, a gargantuan amount of ships to deal with, and I find them broken into rather arbitrary task force here that don't seem to do any uh, good for me personally. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna consolidate our entire navy in Hawaii. And then we will break them up into appropriate task forces and navies when they're all together. So notice how I have to select all before I tell them to move to the naval base. Otherwise, if you just like select a task force, try to tell them to move, nothing, nothing will happen. You have to select all and then tell them where to go. So that's a nice little hint. No template for our trucks, that's okay. Insufficient resources. So this brings up our trade panel. These are all the resources we use producing our military equipment. Um, so we're short on some chromium and short on some rubber. Rubber, we do need. So we're going to trade one civilian factory production-wise for eight rubber from the Dutch East Indies. That's nice. Chromium, that'll bounce back as soon as I tell our, our citizens to stop building so many fucking boats. So, submarines, obviously, we need, we need submarines, oops, we're gonna build submarines up in Seattle, uh, early destroyers, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, the game starts us out producing 13 different destroyers and I find that absurd. So let's drop them We're gonna drop a lot of them We do need to build some right so here in Oregon, let's build some destroyers um, Down here in San Francisco. Let's build some destroyers. We'll do two destroyers per coast So over here then down in the Carolinas. We'll give one one destroyer each Carolinas. There you go. So that's just me assigning. You click on this button. You can assign the dockyard where the destroyers, where the specific ships, rather, are produced. So now we've got four uh, shipyards building destroyers. We can get rid of the rest. Um, oh, come back. Where'd you go? There you go. I feel like there are already some people watching this just being like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's okay. I know what I'm doing. Not really. Okay. Now we got our, our carriers, our Yorktown class. They're very cool. Uh, Norfolk. Let's, uh, let's produce our carriers in Virginia. And then our cruisers. So we have heavy cruisers and light cruisers, I believe. Um... Is this a light cruiser? The Wichita class and the New Orleans class. Neither are light cruisers. They are both heavy cruisers. Okay. So those are heavy boats. Um I think we let's let's drop the Wichita class. Actually, we're gonna switch over to building the light cruisers. The Brooklyn class. 
so there we have it. Let's produce our heavy cruisers in Philly. And our Brooklyn class, well, let's produce them in New York. So, we now are using 14 out of 22 dockyards. This little icon represents your military factory. This little icon represents your naval dockyard, where you build battleships. Um, you can see we're using 14 out of 22, and the way we use more is just by clicking and increasing. You can also click with that button. Um, but basically, oh, and my mistake, we do need to build... Where are our convoys? Convoys are necessary for moving your troops across water, preparing for naval invasions, and for trading with other countries. Um, and if I could figure out where they were on the fucking menu, that would be fantastic. Aha! I just did it. Okay. You just click again on the whatever thing you were selecting, and it'll bring you back to the all ship menu. So there we go. Let's build some convoys. Uh, probably assign five dockyards to that. One, two. Actually, let's bring that down to three. So just so we can do two dockyards for all our ships. There we go. So every ship is currently being started by two dockyards. Beautiful. We are still short on chromium. So, I guess let's buy some from the Soviet Union? Or from South Africa. Let's buy some from South Africa. Um, okay, so now the construction phase. As you can see, we currently have 22 factories available for construction. In use are 105. So, the first thing we need to do is build more civilian factories. If you click on what you want to build, it's going to bring up your province grid or whatever our states right um oklahoma you know they need jobs out there in nebraska yeah let's let's get some factories building and all you have to do is click click on a state right and then you will begin building factories we really uh we have enough time as the United States, we're lucky in that sense that we don't need to build military factories right off the bat. Um, we can, we have the the time luxury of building civilian factories and getting our economy going. I think we can build some in Hawaii too. Yeah. Um, beautiful. We are gonna need oil though, so let's let's also build some fuel silos down here in Texas, Louisiana, Florida. You know, just kind of going with where the oil actually is, Alaska. Um, even though it breaks my heart to drill in Alaska, uh, 1936 though, we can be forgiven. Um, what else do we need? And we can't build synthetic refineries, which gives us rubber yet because we have not researched the technology. Now, I know all of this is a fuckload of information, and you're probably just like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. But here we go, we're doing it. Um, I'm going to affect my construction queue and basically space the fuel silos and the civilian factories out uh, one at a time. Or every other one, I'd rather. Just so everything will get built kind of simultaneously. Ah. And the more civilian factories we have, and as we affect our economic laws and get out of the Great Depression, um, construction time will increase. You can see we're only constructing two things at once. Eventually, we're going to get up to, like, constructing eight things at once. Um, and construction is just going to fly by. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, that said, uh, I think we are ready to hit play. We're going to wait for our Navy to link up in Hawaii and then break them into adequate spots. We are training Marines. We've set up trade deals, and as soon as the, the day adjusts a little bit, the time starts moving, then um, our resources will be fixed. We have established what we're producing, right? And we have this, we fixed our, our god-awful naval production situation. Um, and we're using all our factories and dockyards everywhere. That's perfect. Research, we've got that set up. 
tanks and industry. Intelligence agencies, you might not have this tab if you are not playing with La Resistance. La Resistance! Um, and if you don't, don't worry about it. I'll just, I'm gonna use this very minorly moving forward. But if you're like me and you just bought one of like the whole package with all the DLC, then you'll be interested in what I have to say about that later on. Okay, here we go. Um, you can see up here we have, this is the total number of factories that we own. This is our total number of available manpower, our recruitable population, so to speak. Some 500,500. War support, 5%. We're not at war. Nobody wants to go to war. Understandable. World War I was fucking awful. Um, stability. This is our national stability. We're pretty stable. We're, you know, we're America. And that's our political power. So you can see we're using fuel currently. And as our ships sail to Hawaii, we're going to use more fuel. But once they stop sailing, it'll go back up. And that's a nice little trick. This is all the stuff for editing templates and assigning traits to commanders and whatnot. Um, and we will talk about that later on. So let's bump up the speed and press play. See, there goes our ships. They're sailing off. Sailing off for Hawaii. And you can see we're going to run out of fuel in oh, 10 days with all, <laughs> all of our ships mobilized. But that's okay. People are going to get to Hawaii and uh, look at all the... Oh, beautiful. They'll stop using fuel once they arrive. Da, 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 da. And now you can see our fuel is going back up. The number of days it takes to run out is decreasing. And now we're replenishing up to our surplus capstone, which does increase as technology increases and we build more fuel silos. Does this make sense? I know it's it's an abysmally complicated game, but once you get it, oh my god, I cannot describe the satisfaction of like pulling off your first encirclement or sinking, you know, the enemy navy. It's just it's a bit mind boggling. All right, so we'll wait till our navy is fully assembled and then we'll break them up. Okay, our Navy has assembled. They are all in Hawaii. So what we're going to do is we are just going to merge all these motherfuckers into one giant fleet with 229 vessels. Um, and then we're going to go down. And we're going to start breaking up uh, all these boats and subs into appropriate uh, fleets and task forces. Which is... At the first glance, like, surface value, just intensely intimidating. Because, yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Look at all these... Look at all these ships! I got destroyers, I got subs, I got cruisers, I got battleships, I got carriers. Like, I don't... Ah! Um... I can upgrade some of them. What do I do? So here's the deal. Let's take a submarine. This is the early S-Class submarine. We're gonna double-click. And that's gonna select all the early S-Class submarines. So when you double click on something, it selects all the guys of that same, like, unit, basically. Um, and then we're going to hit this button. Oop, not that button. This button. Create a new task force. So now we have all the S-Class submarines in one unit, and there are 59 subs. So we can continue breaking that up in a second, but let's just keep uh, separating things. So now we have the Barracuda class. There are a lot less of them, as you can see. Um, and the Porpoise class. Which, are there only three of them? Yes, yes there are. Okay. Oops. Ah! I'm, I'm, I'm clicking too fast, damn it! Um, okay, so we have nine Barracuda class subs. Three Porpoise class subs. And 59 S-Class subs, which suck. These are, like, pretty shitty. But they will do the job when it comes to sinking freight convoys later on, which we will need to do. So these two guys, they're, like, a little bit fancier, right? All you have to do to merge task forces is right-click. So I'm holding the three Barracuda, right? Select all. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> Oops. So uh, these are my three Porpoise classes. I'm going to right-click on the nine... The United States Task Force 3. Boom. So now we have a 12, Task Force of 12, and those are our Barracudas and Porpoise classes. And we're going to call this Submarine Force 1. Beautiful. 
12 to 20, I find, is a good size. Uh, it's a good size for submarine, like, patrol units, basically. Um, and if you want to, you can upgrade these guys. Which I think I will, because why the hell not? Just make that all porpoise class. So what they'll do is they'll detach from the task force, sail off to a free dockyard, and get retrofitted. Retrofitted? <laughs> Upgraded. Refitted. Not retrofitted. 59 is a huge amount, so we are going to take this, and we are going to uh, half the current selection of ships, make a new task force, then we're going to do that again. Beautiful. So that's Submarine Force 1. Call this Submarine Force 2. Call this Submarine Force 3. You get the idea. Oops, 4. It can be 4. Fuck it. Beautiful. So now we are left with uh, this is like death stack of battleships and destroyers. Um, the idea with like battle fleets, right, is when your carriers come up against enemy carriers, you want to have a screening force, it's called, um, where basically you have like light cruisers or destroyers that are in front of the carriers that really do most of the sailing around and shooting back and forth while the carriers shoot their heavy guns and launch their planes to target the enemy carriers. So the heavier your screen force is, the better your carriers are going to perform, essentially. And we all know that in World War II, uh, carriers became the name of the game. So let's... Uh, but to, in order to find enemy fleets, you're going to need a scout force. And scout forces, I find, are best made up of heavy... Or not heavy, I'm sorry, light cruisers. So... As you can see, we have 12 light cruisers. Um, these are destroyers. I'm just trying to double click on this light cruiser, bruh. Why can't I not select all my Omaha class? Oh, there we go. Omaha, Omaha class. So we're going to make a new... There we are, 10 light cruisers. And we're going to call this Scout Force 1. And then, how many destroyers do we have? Just a god-awful amount, right? So, create a new task force. 105 destroyers. Split the task force in half. 52. Let's do it again. 26, let's do it again, 13, okay, we're going to take that 13, and we're going to dump them into Scout Force 1, beautiful, Scout Force 1 is now 23 strong, light cruisers and some destroyers, and that's perfect, so if you want to like help tell your shit apart, we can take Scout Force 1, click this little button, we can assign them the binoculars, indicating that that's what we use them for, right? Um, sub forces. Let's go on and make them submarines. Was it submarines? Ah. But did we not? Did we not rename this submarine force two or something? I... Oh, we know we need a submarine force five. Force five. Beautiful. Submarine force one. They're all refitting. Submarine force two. Okay, beautiful. 
Now, we have these 43 ships, and this is our strike force. Here we have three carriers, 15 battleships, 15 heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and eight destroyers. So we're going to need our destroyers, uh, like I said, for screening. So we're going to take these 53 destroyers, dump them back into Strike Force 1. Now we have an absolute death stack. This, this unit, this naval unit here, will decimate anyone they come up against. Um, just like utterly. Completely and utterly. We have these 26 destroyers over here and another 13 destroyers. So we're going to merge them into another unit of destroyers. And that 39 destroyers, that can be the start of our new fleet, right? Or I just, oops, I just put them in the reserve fleet. That's not how you do that. The way you make a new fleet um, is you, you click that and then you just click uh, new fleet. Boom. Click a new fleet, and then U.S. Navy Group 1. We're going to call this our Atlantic Fleet. Currently made up of 39 destroyers, and Ernest King. There he is. What a guy. What a guy. Um, this is our, our battle force. We're going to call this Pacific Fleet. Because that's what it is. And Nimitz. There he is. What a man. What a man. So, Nimitz now has Strike Force 1, Sub more, Sub Force 2, Sub Force 1, Sub Force 5, Scout Force 1. Let's take uh, some of our subs and give them to Ernest. Just all you have to do, again, right click. So now we have three submarine forces, a Strike Force, and a Scout Force. Ernest, he's got the beginnings of his strike force and two sub forces. Beautiful. That's perfect. So now we're going to take Ernest, select all, and you, sir, can hightail it back to the East Coast. Um, let's, uh, let's take him to Norfolk, right? Or should we just park up a DC so everyone can ogle? Let's do that. Um, Nimitz, here you are. Nimitz is done. Right, so we've done it. We have our navies. We have our Pacific Fleet and our Atlantic Fleet. And here we can do this. This is a fun feature. The theater boards on the side. It's only January 19th. This video is going to take forever. Um, so basically what we have is a separation of uh, units. So if I call this Atlantic Theater. You can click on that. And Pacific Theater. Boom. Hawaiian Ridge. Base is in low supply. Yeah, I know. I got way too many ships up in that bitch. But now if we pause and we click again on Navy. Pacific Theater. We can click on this. And there he is. Nimitz with the Pacific Fleet. Or we can click on... What? Oh, there we go. Click on the Atlantic Theater. Um, gotta click on him, and then we have, uh, King, Ernest King, uh, sailing off to Baltimore, or Maryland, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying. Um, and that's just a nice way to keep your guys separate, so you don't have, like, a bazillion faces popping up here at the bottom. Um, because in late game, that can get super annoying. But we successfully established our fleets. Um, can we do some upgrading? Yeah. We're going to upgrade... Ooh, the Indian Indianapolis. We're going to upgrade what ships we can because it's early game and, and we have the time, you know. Okay, got them all upgrading. They're going to go off and do that. It's on pause. Let them all sail around and, and uh, go to their, their places and and whatnot. Beautiful. Free dockyards. Is that so? Um, two. We have two? Let's get the... Uh, 
cruisers going, I guess? I don't think we have free dockyards. Yeah, I was going to say, those dockyards are about to get used by people refitting. Yeah, there it is. Well, let's actually drop our production down here. So that people can have an easier time refitting. We still build these boats fairly quickly. Um, we don't have to worry about it. And look, they're refitting that destroyer. It's just going to take like half a month. That is fine with me. So now we'll go back to the land screen. Um, these buttons on the side, right? You have infantry, navy, air, and... Uh, ah, opposition suffers defeat in the Senate. Um, a motion to censure... Censure. FDR has been defeated. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. These Republicans all mad about Social Security. They can get fucked. Um, if you go to air... Now we can examine our Air Corps, Air Force, rather. We have very few planes to start. Like I said, we are going to really crank out planes later on. This is how you deploy new air uh, air wings, they call them. Uh, you just click this button on your airfields, and then you can bring planes that you have in storage, basically out of storage, and put them on the tarmac. Um, and that's how you do that. Later on, we're going to get into all the things planes can do and how to get uh, pilot exercises. Right now, we just don't have the fuel required to... Actually, do we? Let's see. Yeah, we can get away with it. We can put our pilots on pilot exercises so that this level rookies will go up to regulars eventually. And we'll slowly get air experience. Um, but it does use fuel. So that's something you always have to be mindful of. Eventually, we'll have enough oil to be able to put our whole navies on those exercises. Um, but that is a ways down the road. A witch hunt! Uh, that has a different ring to it these days, doesn't it? <laughs> a minor scandal originating with the White House is starting to gain momentum. They can all fuck off. Uh, oh, and then we'll name this Strike Force 2, right? Boom. Ernest King out here. Do we have any upgrades? Oh my god, every single boat, huh? Alright, I'll just click through that real quick. Let time roll. Alright, there we go. Got all those destroyers upgrading in King's Army. Uh, Navy, rather. And then you can see our reserve fleets are starting to build up. Um, as we produce ships, ships come into our reserve fleet. So, we can see... Um, we're starting to train submarines. We're going to let them sit in our reserve fleets for now. And then once we get more guys, we can assign them different positions or add them to specific task forces. Aha! Continue the New Deal. Three mils. Oh, everything's happening at once. So it's March 11th. Three militaries are <coughs> of the Rhineland. <laughs> Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland territory, close to the French border, in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, while the diplomatic reactions from France and Britain have so far been muted. It is no more than the Germans walking into their own backyard, a polit political commentator in Britain observed. That is worrying. Very worrying. So March 11th, continue the New Deal National Focus has concluded. So we're going to pick a new one. Again, this is what we need. We need to get down the Federal Housing Act as fast as possible. Um, because... We got to get out of the Great Depression. It's crippling our economy. So next step is the WPA, Workers Protection Agency. Millions of people are still suffering from the unemployment resulting from the Great Depression. An agency to put these people to work on public projects may not fully solve the problem, but the Work Progress Administration is a step in the right direction. I remember when I was a kid driving up the slopes of Mount Rainier uh, with my dad up to Paradise, and he pointed out all the like the, the stone walls. You know, he said. FDR built all those. It's cool shit. It's cool shit. So, you know, our political power just jumped up to 161 because we got 150 from continuing the New Deal. I think, personally, the most important thing to do is to get Robert Taft in the White House as quick as possible. Political power gain plus 15%. That's just going to get that going up much faster. But we have to spend 150 political power to do so. So that hurts, right? But it's necessary. It's good. Better off in the long run. Then let's do a small lobbying effort um, to try to get a little more support in the House, because they don't seem to like me. Uh, fucking House representatives. We don't have to worry about any of this right now. Foreign influence? Uh, eh, eh. Naval treaties. 
In order to limit expenditures and avoid another mutually ruinous naval arms race, the great naval powers of the world have signed a number of treaties, limiting the overall size of their fleets and the size of each individual ship. As a signatory of these treaties, we are subject to certain restrictions, but as long as our opponents follow them as well, the balance of power should be maintained. We are currently between 90 and 100% of Britain in capital ship strength. I'm really not worried about that. I'm going to build as many ships as I want. We're Americans, goddammit. That's how we roll. Um, and there we go. That's it. We have started the game. We are rolling on. It's March, as I said. We are just waiting. How are Marines doing? They're training. So the way this uh, training screen works is once your guys... So this is their equipment bar. And this is their training bar. So once it gets to all the way full, they will automatically spawn. Um, but once they, I think they're past like a third of the way trained, you can drop them up. Just deploy them instantly. So let's do that. Uh, because... And then cancel because we don't have enough manpower to... We have a special forces cap on how many marines and paratroopers we can train. So currently, six divisions of marines is all we're going to get. But that is okay for now. So the first thing you're going to do to assign divisions, you're going to get this unassigned divisions thing, right? Um, we're going to create a new army. Boom. New army. And this is our marine corps, goddammit. And who should command the Marine Corps? So, the tr general traits are hugely important. With some of the DLC, you'll be able to assign new traits. Um, but if you don't have that option, the standard traits people start out with will still be there. And they're very important. So, for someone like the Marine Corps, who's going to be doing naval invasions like all the fucking time, and deep in enemy territory, and trying to wrangle ports, this commando trait is... Just massively important. So we're going to put Drusat in charge of the Marine Corps. And then we can assign him to an army group. Like that. And then the army group, basically we assign a field marshal. Who can command up to five field armies. Right? And so this is our one field army inside our army group one. And who else to command the Marine Corps? But goddamn Douglas MacArthur. The man, the myth, the legend. So there he is. We have our first army, American Theater 1. Let's call it the Pacific. Because that's the theater they will be in. Um, and I'm sorry. Can we change the colors around? Your Marines. Let's give you a blue. Thank you. Uh, da -da -da. And give you a, yeah, the perfect, beautiful. So this is your order tab. That pops up when you have land units selected. Um, and basically, front line, uh, I can demonstrate, is for... Well, I can't demonstrate. There's no hostile. Never mind. We'll, we'll demonstrate all that later. But the moral of the story is, this is how you command your units to do something if you don't want to just individually click on everybody and tell them to go places. Um, you'll notice, since they were all just came out, all our marines, they're green. Negative 25% modifier in combat. We want to rectify that, and we also want to get army experience. And the best way to do both those things is to put the army on exercise. So we can tell MacArthur to have the Marine Corps exercising, and select a field marshal and tell him to do something. Everyone in the army will do it. You can also do that by selecting just the army and telling them to do it or not. Um, so now we have all the Marines. They're working out in San Francisco. Let's, uh, let's ship them to Hawaii. I can hang out with the Pacific Navy, because in my mind, you know, the Marines are attached to the Navy. So let's try to keep that as accurate as possible. So we'll send them to Honolulu to hang out with Charlie Nimitz. Um, and they're going to work out in Honolulu and slowly get our Army XP up. Uh, we should probably start training regular infantry as well. I like to train my infantry in Richmond. Because... Because. <laughs> no good reason. Um, six divisions, I think that's fine to start out with. Um, also, you can train, change the sigils. Look at that, there's so many options. Uh, I like the rifle for the infantry division, um, personally. So we got six divisions now training in Virginia. We're going to just let them chill, let them go. This tells you, you know, how much equipment is needed to go places. The logistics screen, ever important now that we're actually training soldiers. Oh, technology. Um, we'll get to that in just a second. Logistics screen. So, as you can see, currently we have a surplus 
of 4.7 thousand rifles, basically. 150 artillery pieces, 151 pieces of support equipment. Currently running a little bit of a fighter deficit. We're going to have to build fighters. Yeah, that's what it's telling me to do there. Missing equipment production. Um, you need to build fighters, damn you. That's fair enough. We probably should build some fighters. Okay, drop our fighter there. Drop our artillery down. Then one, and then it'll fill the grayed out factory. Um, indicating it's queued to receive a military factory. If that makes sense. So, currently we're not producing enough infantry equipment per day to meet our growing demand, but that will change as we accumulate more military factories um, and up our production levels all around. Research slot, so we did that, um, and I tend to think mechanical computing is a nice place to go next, plus 4% research speed, and then we'll continue to play. So, like I said in the very beginning, the USA early game is all about just slowly developing your economy and slowly preparing for intervention in Europe. You see Europe's over there, they're doing their thing. The Soviet Union's fucking huge. France, UK, Italy, they're all being colonial powers. And the dogs are barking. So we're gonna wait till basically until we uh, need to select there we go it's adjusting to our new production rates um so we're doing just fine on all fronts oh treaty of Addis Ababa. ababa italy took one state ethiopia was annexed and 1400 equipment has been seized ethiopia has capitulated so historically that's uh that's fun um italy has conquered ethiopia um scary for us We're going to keep time rolling. So, what's going on over here? Has Japan... Japan has not invaded China yet, have they? No. They have not. They have invaded Korea. Basic machine tools. Very nice. So, we're going to keep our research flowing. Um, this is a choice. Concentrated industry or dispersed industry. If you're in Europe, concentrated industry is pretty good. Um, but, since we're America, and we don't have to worry about people bombing us and and shit um we can yeah okay honestly i just think dispersed industry is better i just think it's better reading it so it's like you get five percent more factory output with concentrated industry but dispersed industry i just think it's better it's more shit um And, you know, our country is fucking huge, so why not disperse the industry as much as possible? We don't know about climate change yet. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, you want us to worry about polluting the rivers with the factories? What? Are you high? Let's, uh, let's take our air wings that are scattered around. We have some in the Panama Canal. We have some down there uh, on the Gulf and some out in California. Let's consolidate them. Ah, Second London Naval Treaty signed. Delegations from Britain, France, Italy, Japan, and the U.S. met in December of 1935 to discuss renewal of the First London Naval Treaty, which restricted the number and size of cruisers and submarines. Negotiations turned quite heated over Italy's war in Ethiopia and Japan's desire to be seen equal with Britain and the U.S. With negotiations now at end, the signatory nations have agreed to limit the size of battleships and aircraft carriers in the hope of preventing another ruinous arms race. Good fucking luck with that. Um, like I said, I'm moving our air wings, uh, all to consolidate them, and then we'll merge them up. I think we have some planes in Hawaii, too. Yeah, very few. Alright, our Marines have reached Honolulu. They're just working out, uh, hanging out with the Navy. And you can see our Army experience is currently ticking up at 1% a day. Um, which the more armies we have exercising, the quicker that'll tick up and this is ah senator votes for government proposal a useful ally um we're gonna spend the army experience basically to edit our divisions later on oh, we can do a small lobbying effort yes please to progress a lot of the new deal legislation we need strong senate and house support it's may now we're just trucking along we got all our airplanes here they have arrived 
we can pull these 12 fighters out of storage. And we can hit this button and merge all of them to just sort of consolidate what's going on. Ah, ah WPA! Beautiful. Make sure all our planes are working out. Here we are. So now, the Agricultural Adjustment Act. We need to do that, and then Fair Labor Standards, and then Federal Housing. Because this is going to see reduce the effect of the Great Depression, replaces Great Depression with slow recovery. We're doing it. We're doing it, boys. Modify government? I have the option. We have 150 political power. Um, I don't think we really need to add another political advisor at this second. I think it's more important for us to, uh, oops. Ah, we can't, we can't replace it yet. That's right. We need limited intervention, but what can we do? Political actions. Um, we can give refuge to German and Italian scientists. We can do some nation building in the Philippines. Let's do that. Um, can I not give statehood yet? No, not yet. Okay. We'll wait. We'll wait. Well, we might as well spend it, right? Um, let's get, let's get a tank designer, uh, research speed, armor, and heart attack. I like the speed and reliability because we need to be able to move quickly to smash and pull off encirclements. Uh, yeah, speed and reliability, plus the research buff. So we'll get a tank designer. Marvin Harrington. Beautiful. And now, here we are. We are a signatory of the London Treaty. Great Depression, ouch. And home of the, th home of the free. Da -da -da -da. Pretty sure the forward pass hasn't been invented in football yet where we're at right now so this is kind of cool you can set your priority between reinforcements upgrades i always set reinforcements on top priority because i find that it's hugely important <laughs> i mean basically um if we go to our marine corps there's this green bar which represents organization ah we finished researching our light tanks the green bar represents organization. An organization is what you need to carry out a fight. When your organization runs out in a division, that's when they retreat, basically. And then the gold bar is your current fighting strength. Um, and as you can see, it's 98% because they're three pieces of equipment shy, but that's just because they're training and they're, they're simulating battle and things are getting broken. Um, and their organization is low because they're exercising. We took them off exercise, their organization would raise all the way up to the top. Um, but I put my reinforcement on high priority because if this bar goes down to say like 50%, your troops are going to get walloped. They're just going to get run over. Um, they take huge negative buffs. So let's research the Stuart. Um, because I'm a big fan of medium tanks and I kind of want to rush medium tank production. But I also need light tanks because we're going to put them in our infantry template a little later on. Um, some people might think that's ludicrous. I like the breakthrough. I like the breakthrough bonus. Um, so we finished researching construction. Very nice. So let's get uh, synthetic oil experiments going so we can construct synthetic refineries. Uh, and that's going to provide rubber for building planes and jeeps and trucks and all sorts of shit. And those are all very important. Okay, I've just uh, tweaked our fighter production a little bit. Drop our infantry equipment down one. Put our fighters up one because I noticed we were starting to really kind of lose out on fighters um and there we go there we go much better missing equipment production we are not recruiting any naval bombers so let's do that shall we air superiority air superiority ah the spanish civil war um nationalist spain has declared war on spain Very fun, very fun. So we are still totally isolated. We cannot send volunteers to the war, unfortunately, even though there were Americans that went over and fought in the Spanish Civil War. Um, but as you can see, we have, it's kicked off, Nationalist Spain versus Spain, um, and they're gonna, they're gonna duke it out. We'll see who wins. That'll be interesting. Aha! Our divisions have trained. We have our first infantry divisions. Um, 
We're going to create a new army and attach that army to a new new field marshal. And who who's going to lead this army? Fucking take a guess. This is General George S. Patton, everybody. Um, and the field marshal here, we are going to assign Eisenhower. And then we're going to start them exercising. And they've created the six divisions. It's just going to reset. And now we are creating six more divisions. Um, and they're, they're going to start the training process all over again. And the more guys we have out and exercising, the more uh, our army experience will tick up. And we'll be able to build better divisions. We did it! Agricultural Adjustment Act. So we have to wait um, some time. They are... No, new legislation is still being drafted. So we have to wait for this bill basically to be ready. Um, so in the meantime, I think it's really great to grab this extra research slot right off the bat. So it's June, it's July 29th. Um, we've completed the Agricultural Adjustment Act. And we are trying to get another research slot. And we should be, yeah, slow recovery. The depression is slowly ending. We are working on it. <laughs> we are fucking trying. FDR is doing his humanly best. Ah, the games. The 11th Olympic Games were recently held in Berlin, Germany. Attended by athletes from 49 different nations across the world, the 1936 Summer Olympics are the first in history to have enjoyed limited live television coverage. The Games were a significant propaganda victory for the German regime, which spent lavishly on the event. German athletes saw the most success, winning 33 gold medals, while the Americans came in second with 24. The bastards. Four of these were won by Jesse Owens, the single most successful athlete of the Games. There you go, boys. The games are concluded. That's the last time that'll happen for a while. So I might as well create this agency. I like this icon. Officers of Strategic Services. Blah, 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 blah. Strategic Services. Um, create the agency. Again, if you don't have law resistance, don't worry about that. If you do, then I'll just do a very limited description of how it works when the agency is formed. Aha! Ah! Technology. Very nice, very nice. Let me move this guy up. Okay, so we just finished that a research as you can see research is locked to years right so there's not too much more we can do um except hit this excavation over here and gradually oh this only has one more day it's about to finish very nice mechanical computing um generally now i'm gonna save one research slot this is gonna be like our industry research slot here at the bottom so once this finishes once this finishes we'll just keep this box going for industry and this can actually start going into other stuff we need um like planes <laughs> so uh we're gonna start researching this warhawk and then after the tank is done we'll start in on our doctrines doctrines are a very important part of this game they take a very long time to research so you have to start them early um and they just give you an overwhelming amount of bonuses to your to your dudes, to your troops, to your equipment, to everything. All right, now we have established our intelligence agency. The first thing to do is start a cryptology department, form department. That's going to spend factories uh, while it works, but it's going to be fine. Aha! Extra research slot. Nice, nice, nice. Can we do this yet? No. All right. So while we wait for the fair labor standards legislation, some people, well, some people like to say that uh, you should just wait and then hit it because it's gonna be like 24 more days or something. Uh, I kind of don't agree with that at all. Um, instead, because like why waste time, right? Why waste time? Instead, we're gonna form the war department just to get that done. But now we have an extra research slot that's huge. We can start in on doctrines. Let's go to our land doctrine. Eh? Um, and as you can see, the United States is already locked into the superior firepower firepower doctrine. Um, so we can start to go down this tree. But you can see leg infantry. Organization plus 10. That's just huge. Because as I mentioned earlier, the organization is what keeps your men fighting. So the more organization, the longer they fight, and the more they win. In a nutshell, basically. All right, it's October. We finished the Stewart. Finished researching the Stewart. We gotta wait a little while on our medium tanks, but that's okay. 
So now we can go over to artillery. Um, well, we actually, we have to wait till 39, right, to get the better artillery. So we can just wait on all that. That's fine. It's totally fine. Let's start researching some support companies. Um, support companies are hugely important. Engineers and recon are the most important. Basically, these guys uh, will affect your divisions in positive ways. Um, and generally, I really like the... Obviously, every division is going to need these two guys. Uh, engineers and recons, basically. Um, but our tank divisions, they're going to need maintenance companies. And our infantry divisions are going to need field hospitals. I like field hospitals. That's a controversial choice. Right there, someone just pulled their hair out and said, Why would you ever fucking put a field hospital... I like field hospitals. They make sense to me. Um, they work. Save lives. Outdated equipment in production. And this is a nice little notification. So we've researched a better version of our light tanks. So we can adjust and move our light tank production to the new light tanks. The M3s. We have five army experience. So this is a good chance to talk briefly about um, templates. So we edit our infantry division. This is our current infantry division. 3x3 three three infantry with support artillery and an engineer company. Pretty good basic. Combat width 18. Um, our goal, we're going to eventually build 40 width divisions. That is, there's a lot of, this is also a, a controversial topic. The, the Reddit community will argue uh, 20 or 40 width is better. I think 40. That's a personal choice. As you can see, there's a shitload of information uh, going on here. Um, but there's basically a few things that are most important. Combat width, organization, soft attack, hard attack, breakthrough. Those are like kind of the big, big things that you need to worry about, right? So it costs army experience to edit these templates. Basically, what we're going to do is I'm going to aim for a 40 width division... With infantry mostly filling up these blocks, artillery in the back, maybe some motorized on the side, uh, or some light tanks. So, first things first, infantry battalions, add infantry. And that's going to bump our combat width up, up to 20, uh, bump our organization up to 51, drop our piercing damage, uh, or no, not drop it, I guess. It's going to up our heart attack, because there's more men, and up our soft attack, because there's more men. Also up our manpower. So you can see our division right now, there's 10,000 men in this division, uh, in one single division. Which is kind of staggering to think about. But the numbers in World War II are fucking ridiculous. Um, soft attack, that's basically effective against enemy infantry. Hard attack is basically effective against enemy artillery or, or tanks. Or armor, basically. Organization, as I said, that keeps you fighting. Recon, that's why we're going to have to get a recon company in there eventually, so they can plan and scout ahead and anticipate the enemy. Um, obviously, their weight goes up, so they'll move a little slower, right? Because there's more people. Supply use is going to go up. That's a given. Um, but that's like the very crude, very brief description of what's going on here. <laughs> but we're going to continue up to this as we get more army experience. So we'll hit save, spend that army experience. And now our divisions are 20 width, and they are more manpower. And as you can see, reinforcements, they are going to work to reinforce and fill the extra spots um, that were just created in the division. Because now more men belong in the division, so they're going to work on filling those reinforcements. And we can see the manpower thing, it's at 90%, right? Current fighting strength. That'll bump up. I think it's hugely important to... Edit your templates as you go, as you accumulate the experience and are able to. Because early, like, the first couple times I played, I got to, you know, 500 army experience. Then I did, like, massive template overhauls and just immediately had no equipment. <laughs> like, everything. I was just, like, fucked. Um, because I didn't think about it. So I think as you go, keep it simple, keep it slow, ramp it up easy, uh, and slowly integrate more men into your division so you don't run massive deficits later on. When you're in combat and you need the fighting strength. We're getting there. We can recruit an operative. Uh, again, if you don't have law resistance, don't worry about this. So what do we got? These guys, he's a seducer. Demolition expert. Tough. I like Virginia Hall. That was sexy demolition expert. That's, that's great. This is uh, something that's very important to look at. World tension um, dictates a lot of what you can do. Um... 
as the United States in particular. Right? So, world tension generates higher and higher and higher. Ah! Election of 1936. The day of the presidential election has arrived. Incumbent Franklin Delano Roosevelt has already implemented several of the programs referred to collectively as the New Deal, intended to take the U.S. out of the Great Depression. While many of the efforts have been popular, his plans to further extend the role and power of the government have been met with criticism from his opponent, Republican Al Landon. Alf Landon. Coming from the oil industry, Landon wants to see the greater economic freedom. Will Roosevelt and the Democratic Party want to expand Social Security and ensure economic stability? The election may be a close call. Fucking... It's a no-brainer. The Democrats! People have spoken. Um, I was saying world tension. Once it gets to a certain high enough point, then we can join factions and intervene, basically. But otherwise, like, the people of the United States have no interest in foreign wars, right? Unless the world tension is high enough, if that makes sense. So right now I've just put our strike force on naval maneuvers because just like the land soldiers, the we can take this fresh experience level or this trained experience level and get it all the way up to regular, which will give us a buff in combat. Senator from Texas offers support. The senators from Texas have approached the government, offering their support from the president to return in return for an informal guarantee that Texas would be the site of a new munition, munitions plant for the army. Um, that's fucking corruption. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, it's easy to power game the uh, diplomatic system here and just do that every time it pops up, and you'll just gain support all over the place. But we're motherfucking we're FDR, goddammit. We finished. Uh, forming the cryptology department and now we can begin to de uh, decode ciphers right so let's start decoding japan cipher um and later on we can use that oh hello we have more divisions let's select them and just right click on Patton's face and boom they've been assigned to Patton's army beautiful and they're gonna just keep working out and keep giving us that army xp as our army slowly grows, and then once again they've reset. Now, however, we are at a deficit of equipment. Um, 4.8 thousand. That's a bummer. So let's stop recruiting for now. Or maybe just recruit like two at a time. Let's recruit like two at a time. And we'll ramp that up again later, but let's let our supplies catch up with our, our current demand, essentially. All right, we have formed our war department. Um, how are we doing over here? Eesh, 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 eesh. Medium lobbying effort, because we need support to pass our New Deal legislation. Um, ah, come back. What are you doing? Fair, so it's the legislation is still being drafted for the Fair Labor Standards Act. That's acceptable. We'll fill our time with the Rubber Reserve Company. Um, and wait. Okay, here we are, December 30th. Uh, so that is it, pretty much, for 1936. Um, I'll pause on New Year's Eve here. But, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm think i doing pretty good. If you watch this and you're just like, you fucked everything up, let me do let me know, seriously. Don't, I mean, don't be mean, but like, let me know what I can do better, right? Um, but I hope that if you're watching this, if you're a newbie to the game, um, like I was, then maybe this will give you a big leg up going forward. Uh, tune in next time. We'll do 1937 and progress. Keep our keep getting our economy out of the gutter. Start trading more guys. Really fuck with our divisions more. And probably start building some military factories. Um, yeah, all right. This is the beginner to beginner walkthrough part one. Again, I am Redwall. Thank you all so very much for watching. Thank you all so very much for watching. Yeah, that's what I just said. I've been... Drink a lot of coffee today, goddamn. <laughs> I I know you're all hungry for Bannerlord. I, I do apologize for that delay. I'm stuck in this like brutal cycle of waiting for mods to get updated to the patch and so forth. Um, it'll happen though, I promise. I won't let you down. Okay, thank you all very much. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one for 1937. All right.